I'm talking right now with Dr. Jacques Lenders, who is the task force chair of Pheochromocytoma Paraganglioma Endocrine Society Clinical Practice Guidelines. Thank you so much for being here. So I know you have been working really for years on these new guidelines. Can you tell me a little bit about them? Yes, uh, well, there are several reasons why we felt the guideline might be uh, usable for endocrinologists, physicians in general. And that the first one is that uh, pheochromostoma paraganglioma is very rare, a very rare disease with a, a variable clinical presentation. And uh, that's, that's uh, you, 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 I would say, a doctor has, well, it will very, be very difficult for a physician to get experience with it because it's so rare. And I think even in larger medical centers, uh, it, it, the frequency that the doctors see this uh, tumor is also very rare. So the experience is for a single physician limited. That's one reason. The, f the second reason is that if you miss the tumor, if it's not diagnosed and treated properly, it's associated with a considerable risk of uh, cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. And that leads to doing doctors uh, perform many tests to rule out the tumor. And uh, so I think that might be, that's the second reason why a guideline might help to, let's say, to establish the most effective test to rule out or confirm the tumor. Really the ability to spare patients having to undergo unnecessary tests. Well, that's, that's one of the reasons why we felt it might be good to have such a guideline. I agree. But also in helping to educate the clinicians who, as you mentioned, might not have the opportunity to yes, see Yes, I would say the most important uh, step to improve the outcome and the prognosis of patients and also the relatives, that's, um, that's early recognition of signs and symptoms, so early considering the tumor. And because you can have the best test on the world, but if you do not consider the tumor, then you will miss the diagnosis. So that's, that's another um, issue that will be uh, reiterated by this um, guideline. Uh, know the signs and symptoms and consider the tumor in an early stage. And that, I think, is so critical for people because you mentioned this is rare, yet having that ability and that knowledge is going to change the field in terms of being able to recognize it. Yes, that's right. So, but there are some other issues here. That's there are the recent years there are new exciting developments, especially in the genetic and uh, imaging field. And uh, well, we thought that if we have the best available evidence, we could help. This could help the physicians to select the most effective test to find the tumor by imaging, or to determine if the patient has an underlying germline mutation for development of the tumor. So that's another issue. That's, uh, it, it's still an area of some controversy, but, um, and for the time being, I think this guideline can be of help to help the physician, to, can be of help for the physicians to, let's say, which test would be the first, or should we do all tests in all patients, etc. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Lenders. This is very important information. We appreciate you being here and talking to us about your research. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much.